Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Erie Explorations. Um, as I mentioned, we are uh, heading, we actually arrived to, at the airtight bridge. Uh, we're out of the car and ready to do our nighttime investigation. Um, this should be exciting to try to um, unravel the mystery of the murder of Diana Small. So, and you are getting ready to go with this and we're gonna do this right now. Okay, so we're at the um, airtight bridge, as I mentioned, north of Charleston. Um, this is a location where Thomas Small um, dumped the torso of his wife that he just murdered. Um, it's a very interesting location, very creepy actually. We're actually out in the middle of nowhere down a bunch of winding roads. So we're gonna see how this, what we can come up with here. Now they do say, reports say that you can hear like disembodied voices and just a bunch of other paranormal like um, stuff. So you feeling any how are you feeling, ladies? Really scared. <laughs> You're feeling scared? Yeah, well, like it is it's black. Out here. Yeah, it's it's definitely pitch dark out here. But nothing to worry about. Yeah, lots of spider webs. I'm just gonna walk the outside of the bridge, so I guess I would be heading south on the bridge right now. Um, once I've explored the bridge, oh, happy little spider. I do not like spiders. We're kind of thinking about maybe coming out here on the uh, the anniversary of the murder date, which would be October 15th, of course, 2020. I'm not sure if other paranormal enthusiasts will be out here on the same night trying to, I don't want to use the word celebrate, but to um, investigate. Oh, that's cool. We have a we have a little enemy inside. Well, we have a little monster in the tree. It looks like a. I don't know if that's a. Oh, it's a it's a possum. It's a possum. Oh, it's a raccoon. Oh, it's a raccoon in the tree. Oh, I thought I heard some kind of voice over there earlier. Okay, see the eyes. Um, we're we're pointing our. So Madison. So tell, what's why? Why are you scared? Because <laughs> it's dark. It's dark. Um, you should never be afraid of darkness. Um, so just just for the record, um, if you do hear disembodied voices, um, understand that there's a lot of history in this location. Actually, probably just anywhere in the state of Illinois. <laughs> but. Um, You'll be fine. Okay. Okay? Okay. So I want you to be a warrior and get through this. See? I don't see anything. He's right there. He's going down the tree. Oh, yeah, I see it now. See his little tail? Yeah, it's so cute. He's just a little guy. It looks like me. Okay. This one's really strong. Um, watch, watch your six. Because there's, there's big spiders. Yeah. I'm not... You know. If you guys listen carefully...
All right, so right now we're on the airtight bridge. Um, I'm getting, I went ahead and walked the uh, perimeters of the bridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a spirit box session um, and try to communicate with uh, Diana and uh, we'll see what we can get. So here we go. All right, so I have the spirit box out. Um, we're gonna try to communicate with Diana. All right, Diana, if you're here with me, uh, say yes or no. If you're here with me, say yes or no. I'd like to uh, find out more information on your passing. I'm sorry that happened to you. Are you here with me tonight? If you're here with me, give me a sign of your presence. So right now I have a dual channel. Um, we have one channel going in reverse at 150 milliseconds, and that's on the AM, and then I have an FM going um, 150 milliseconds forward. So this should allow us to, or allow me to communicate with Diane, or Diana. So Diana, are you here with me tonight? I want you to use this device and try to communicate with me. It must have been horrible to lose your life like that. I'm sorry that your life ended so soon. So I want you to answer, are you resting in peace right now? Is everything going okay with you right now, post-life? I want you to speak to me, communicate, use all your spiritual powers to communicate with me using this device. So, Diana, are you here with us? You must be elated knowing that uh, the person that took your life actually um, is sentenced and will never come out of jail. It happened a few years ago. So I'm happy to announce that to you. Can you tell me whether you're fulfilled from this? Does this make you happy? Did you try to speak to me on that one? So Diana, I need you to communicate with me through this. Are you the one um, affecting the temperature gauge on the PSB11 spirit box?
Are you here with me, Diana? Speak to me through this. Diane, if you're here with me, give me a sign of your presence. It doesn't look like you want to speak with me through the spirit box, so... Maybe you'll speak with me through the, uh, for an another way. As I mentioned, I'm sorry that, um... Your husband took your life and your life ended so soon. So Diane, I'm going to give you a few more minutes. Are you here with me tonight? And if you are, I need you to communicate with me a little more. since you didn't get a chance to tell it. What was the name of your husband? The one that killed you? Tell me the name of the husband, your husband that killed you. Brian, is that the one? Are you can you, are you affecting the temperature gauge on the uh, on this device? If so, I want you to um, talk. I want you to talk with me through this device instead of just affecting the gauge. If that's you. I came all the way out here in the middle of nowhere to try to communicate with you and try to, to get more answers, so it'd be nice to get some answers from you. Are you okay?
All right, so apparently uh, Diana doesn't want to communicate with me through the uh, PSB, S, PSB 11 spirit box. So what I think I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to communicate with her using the um, Necrophonic app. And then if that doesn't go through, we're just, I'm just going to go and leave and, and just call it a, a bust on trying to communicate with her. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and... Okay, so we're parked on the bridge, in the middle of the bridge, um, and I'm going to go and do a necrophonic uh, spear box session, uh, and we're going to see what we can communicate with Diana. Um, so, Diana, are you here with me right now? If you're here with me, I want you to um, make your presence known. Try to communicate with me using this device. Are you here with me right now? As I was trying to say before, I, I'd like to say I'm sorry that you lost your life to the, to the hands of your husband. Your life was taken short. Are you okay? So, your husband took your life, um, is, was there, what was the reason, I mean, what, what could be a possible reason why he would take your life? So as I'm doing the spirit box, I hear what well, sounds like coyotes in the background. Yeah. Kind of far away, but nothing to get overly worried about. But nevertheless, I can hear them. Anyhow, so Diana, um, what was the name of your husband? The one that took your life. The coyotes are getting the dogs to bark in the background. So, Diane, um, I see that you don't want to communicate with me with through the spirit app. Uh, give me a sign of your presence. Um, it would be really cool if you could materialize and. Kind of give us a. Anyhow. Um, so, is there anything you'd like to say? Is there anything you'd like to communicate with us? I'd like you to um, provide me the name of the person that killed you, the, your husband. What is his name? You have to speak a little louder and be a little more clear. What was his name?
So what was the date that he took your life? What day did you uh, die on? What was that? What date did you die on, Diane? So, Diana, are you here with us? I need you to speak with me. All right, so Diana, I'm gonna give you a few more minutes to communicate with me. Um, is there anything you would like to say? So I'm hearing like some crazy sounds over here. All right, so I'm gonna give you a, about a few more seconds. So, Diana, I just want you to you know, use as much energy you have to communicate how you're feeling. Would you like me to leave? If you like me to leave, say yes. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and end this beer box session.
thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, investigation at the airtight bridge. Um, it's hard to tell whether I have issues communicating with me or not. Um, I'll have to review the footage and see. Uh, but being on this bridge and investigating it, I don't really, I didn't really have a sense that it was haunted or paranormal. Um, but I do feel like she was trying to communicate. Uh, I got some responses using the, uh, the Spirit Box 11. So hopefully after reviewing, it's, uh, those are legitimate you know, uh, communications from her. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we're getting ready to leave the airtight bridge. Um, as I was doing the spear box sessions, I was actually parked and we have the car off. So we're going to go and try to start this car. Um, some of the reports say that people experience car not starting. Um, so we're going to go and try to debunk that. And I got the car starting. Okay, so it looks like that's debunked again. All right, so we're going to wrap for the night. Um, Again, I thank you for tuning in to another episode of Erie Explorations. Um, please like and subscribe. It's going to help build the channel and help it grow. So with that being said, I look forward to presenting another adventure. Uh, we have a, many a locations to go to um, in the days to follow. So um, with that being said, have a good night and thanks again. So. Well, did you experience anything, Heather, on, on that bridge? Just uh, fear. So what What kind of fear? Like, I don't understand. Can you elaborate on the fear that you've... It's dark. There's holes in the ground. Knowing that a man dumped a woman's carcass over the edge is not exactly, you know, comforting. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. And it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I guess if that's... I guess that's how he thought he can get away with it, is being out in the middle of nowhere and, you know. It's just sad. It's sad that he, you know, what did he do, cut her he arm? Cut, he cut her head off so they, they didn't have dental records. And they cut off their, her hands and her, what? Let me get the road. Oh, your, her hands and her feet. So her hands and her feet, okay. So they were able to recover the, uh, the, the torso. torso. And then... Twelve years later, her family filed a missing report, missing persons report, and they linked it up with what she would was called Jane Doe, and then they did a DNA test, and that's how they identified her. That's crazy. It's very sad story. That's yeah, very sad. So there's this... always divorce.